Welcome to this brief introduction on Agile Requirements Engineering. My name is Christoph Ebert and I will guide you through this introduction. Agile Requirements Engineering is key. Just think in terms of how much waste we create with requirements and in a project. 30 to 50% of all requirements which are delivered do not generate any tangible value. That's a lot. And you certainly have made already similar experiences on your own. Think about office software. Which features are you using in Excel or Word? It's a small amount. But the same holds for automotive electronics. There's a lot of gadgets which do not really deliver a concrete value. And we can trace that on into industry systems, into medical. Many, many contents are not really reflected in terms of value, but are rather a collection of the biggest common denominator to satisfy a variety of markets, stakeholders, etc. So we have to scale down and that is exactly where HI requirements and requirement engineering comes into the picture. When we look into HIL, we typically look into a set of five specific activities. I will map these five specific activities into what we call Agile Requirements Engineering. Now, the first and most important of the five is attributed to value creation. We need to make sure that our requirements transport a tangible value. There are different techniques, think in terms of design thinking, where we try to optimize the user experience. Think in terms of what we call the Kano model, which has a set of different distinctions, what type of requirements have biggest value, while others like base factors don't transport much value. Value delivery, value creation is key in any requirements engineering. Never ever be satisfied with the first round of interviews, workshop results, or even worse, a finished specification because from our experience in the many vector projects we have done worldwide there's one thing very clear a written specification is never stable it will change and if we don't ask the right questions in the beginning then we have later a lot of rework and um, overheads which we have to satisfy now on the other side we have to reduce waste waste is rework changes to requirements which we have not well analyzed requirements which have the wrong quality, where we might misinterpret the content of the requirements. So we have to reduce the amount of overheads. Optimize value streams means that we do not ping pong with requirements. Often I see people write a requirement, throw it over to designers to analyze. They would come back and say, I don't understand this and that. Later it goes to a project manager. That's not good. Be sure that you build teams which have a responsibility for the requirement. And that brings us into ownership. Scrum, feature teams, and many of the Agile techniques built upon clear ownership. It's a key principle in Agile, and it's a key principle for requirements engineering. The requirements and systems engineer or business analyst should have a very close relationship with their different feature-related teams in development or test. Finally, let me emphasize the need to continuously improve. In Agile development, we use retrospective to make sure that we learn from what we have been doing. We all know that we are not perfect. We make errors. We deliver features which don't have the right value level. What is key is that we don't repeat the same errors several times. And for that reason, we recommend build the perspectives, learn, improve your templates, make sure you have the right level of testability and follow in this circle in your Agile requirements engineering. I wish you good success with agility and specifically Agile requirements engineering. Now the topic of course has much more flavors and for that reason, please contact us at vector.com consulting. Thank you very much.